are much more interactive if everyone just chimes in with an answer. It doesn't have to be correct. This is kind of, um, I, I did it as kind of an OCAPS type review. It does not, um, it doesn't touch on even a, you know, a quarter of all the PEDs in your books and in the review books. Um, I did use, a lot of this comes from the Trattler Kaiser Friedman Review of Ophthalmology book, which I think is a really good resource for OCAPS and you can, and boards, and you can kind of annotate it with your op, um, opto questions and things like that. All right, so first, what is, um, what's another name for ROP? Retrolental fibroplasia. Good job. All right. See, and it's a little anonymous because no, I, I don't know who's talking exactly. So um, re risk factors are prematurity, low birth weight, O2, um, stable or unstable course. When do we screen these, these babies? What's the weight? 1500, I think. Yes, 1500. And um, less than or equal to 30 weeks or an unstable course as per the neonatologist's. When do we see the ret nasal retina vascularized? Is that 32 weeks? That's at 36. What about the temporal retina? 40. 40, great. Okay, so we know that we classify ROP into zones and extents. Um, so what's zone one? 60 degrees around the optic nerve. Excellent, and what's zone two? It's basically goes from the na from nasal uh, aura around in, in a circle. And then zone three is the crescent temporally that is not included. And the extent is measured in what? I think you guys are, you, I think you guys know this. It's the extent is measured in clock hours. So um, let's talk about the stages. Who, who knows the, the stages of ROP? I've given you one of them. It's the Line, ridge, RD, and V. Right. So in order, it will be line, ridge, ridge with extra retinal fiber vascular proliferation, which is the tufts and popcorn. Then there's four and five are subtotal RD and total RD with funnel. So the sub in terms of four uh, A is extrafobial RD, and B is basically macula off RD. So you can see that these pictures kind of show the demarcation line, the ridge. I think sometimes the, it's difficult to tell the differences when you're first looking at babies. It's, uh, the view is not perfect and it's difficult, but um, with time, I think it's just a, a repetition thing, which um, some of us will do and some of us won't, um, but it's good to know these stages for, they're, they're highly tested. So, um, I won't quiz you on the PLUS disease, but PLUS disease is important because this is retinal vascular dilation and tortuosity in the posterior pole. You can see a picture up top of one of our babies um, at Baskin Palmer that had the that had a ROP, um, PLUS disease, and um, it is indicative of actively progressing disease. So um, PLUS disease is very uh, watched. Rush disease is if vascularization ends in zone one or very posterior zone two and also has plus disease. Threshold disease is five contiguous clock hours of, of NV or eight cumulative clock hours with plus disease and the vessels being in zone one or two. These are just things you have to memorize. Okay, and then- Real quick, we, Dr. Crane. Yes, go ahead. I've read, I've read things in the past about um, plus disease with like poor pupil dilation and vitreous haze and all kinds of other things that are not included in other sources. Yes. It okay. pretty much just boils down to the vessels, right? Yes, um, that is the, I think there are a lot of things that can go with uh, active and advancing disease, um, which are things that you just mentioned, but that as for the definition, it's, it's mostly the, ve the vessels that we're looking at. Um, the types of ROP, you can see them here, but they're, I don't think they're as highly tested as the other um, classifications that we just went through. But there's type one and type two, and usually classify on the most advanced disease noted. 
So not just what most of the retina looks like, but what the most is advanced disease is. So um, what is the differential diagnosis of peripheral vascular changes and retinal dragging? Just give me one and we'll, I have a couple. Fever. Fever, yep. So fever, incontinenta pigmenti, X-linked retinoschisis, these are things that you should know about. Um, I won't talk about incontinenta pigmenti again, so I'll just tell you that here you can see that it's X-linked dominant. So that means it's seen, we see it only in females and it's lethal in males. It has the four um, types of skin lesions um, that kind of get worse until they hypopigment and also has CNS uh, anomalies. Um, what's the differential diagnosis of a temporally dragged disc? We already have one of them is already up there in the other differential, but can anybody tell me a couple? Caro would be another one. Yes, exactly. And fever. Let me see. Great. So let's talk about fever. It's familial exudative vitreoretinopathy. retinopathy. What is the inheritance? This is actually very important. And it's familial, so maybe that helps you. It's dominant, autosomal dominant usually. It can be X-linked recessive, but usually it's autosomal dominant. Um, these inheritance patterns are actually highly tested, so, um, so pay attention to them. They're, although it's a lot of information to remember, it's a really easy question, right, if you know it. Um, they are, uh, fever is a rare progressive developmental abnormality of the peripheral retinal vasculature, and it's especially seen temporally. There are three stages. Um, some of them are non-perfusion, and the worst is RD. It's treated oftentimes with prophylactic laser, um, which is, has a questionable utility in some, uh, to some experts, but RD repair, of course, if they have detachments. So um, the next topic we could talk about is PHPV, persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Um, this is an incomplete regression of the tuna vasculosa lentis and primary vitreous. Is it unilateral or bilateral? Unilateral? Yes. And it has a spectrum of persistent structures. What is the inheritance? Kind of a trick question. Brad. It's sporadic, yes. Um, and it's the most common cause of what? Cataract. Unilateral congenital cataract. So you can see the spectrum of persistent structures um, in the findings, but this is mostly microphthalmic patients. Um, for some reason on, the, on testing, they like to ask about elongated ciliary processes. Um, we know that there are radial vessels on the iris surface, um, which can be seen in some um, young babies that don't have this. Um, shallow AC makes sense. Everything is basically pulled forward, uh, rotated forward. Iris vascularization, vascularization we said, uh, angle closure glaucoma, and um, vitreous hemorrhage and RD. It can have intraocular cartilage, which brings us to another tested uh, question, type of question. Well, we, first we see a picture here of a unilateral cataract, and um, you can see on this scan basically microphthalmia. What's the differential? Just give me a one or two intraocular, other intraocular cartilage uh, findings in, in, in other diseases. Which other diseases? Keratoma? Yes. So PHPV, which we just said, med medulopathelioma, teratoma, and trisomy 13, patau, which um, I don't think they ask almost, they don't ask patau very often, just um, in any of the OCAPs that I remember or boards. So Good let's question. Talk, Dr. Green, with, with babies, a um, full-term baby, do you expect to see those radial vessels, normal anatomical vessels, day one on a full-term baby? I usually not, um, but uh, Dr. Eichenbaum might be able to answer that more often. I usually don't don't exa examine very many full-term babies, um, but yeah, I have. Sure. But you, but you, you can you can see per, um, persistent vessels, but it's not the common finding. Do you agree, Dr. Eichenbaum? Yeah, I agree. That that's pretty much what you see. You know, okay. and, and of the of these of these things, the thing that you're going to see in practice, and it, I mean, how many of you are planning on doing cataract surgery when you get out? 
on adults. Everybody. Right. Many people. Right, almost everybody. So you're going to see PHPV in some form impacting your practice. Yeah. And, um, okay, going on to Coates disease, uh, another highly tested um, disease. These are all pretty highly tested diseases that I'm touching on. Um, what's the other name for it? Because uh, it, in the boards, be, be aware that they might ask you a question on a very common disease that you know the answer to, but in the answer choices, they might have a name for the disease that you are not used to using. So um, learn these secondary names. What is Coates disease's other name? Lieber's miliary aneurysms or something? Exactly. What the inheritance I already told you here, non-hereditary. Uh, what's the sex predilection, male or female? Male. Male, mm -hmm. 10 to one. It's unilateral or bilateral? Unilateral. Unilateral. Um, there, there are some patients who can have peripheral retinal changes um, with Coates disease, but usually the, the, the active disease is in one eye. Um, findings include leukocoria, strabismus, uh, telangiectatic blood vessels that leak, and so you get subretinal lipid. Um, you can also get intraretinal lipid, and which layer does the um, lipid, which layer is the lipid in? It's uh, noted to be in the outer plexiform layer. Um, Exudative detachments are, um, you can see these big yellow detachments with subretinal lipid. Um, and then microaneurysms are seen. You can see these um, in these FA scans and capillary nonperfusion in the periphery, which uh, I think the rightmost scan, you can really see that nonperfusion. Uh, non Next uh, disease would be Stargardt's disease. What's the inheritance? Autosomal dominant. Recessive or dominant, could, could be both. What about the gene? ABCA4. Yes, very highly tested question. Is it unilateral or bilateral? Bilateral. Yes. So this is the, a juvenile macular degeneration with flex. Um, it is the most common hereditary macular dystrophy. So childhood macular dystrophy presents um, young in the first two decades of life with decreased central vision. Um, we, I think that most people know about these piscoform flex, that's kind of the pathognomonic finding. Um, fovea ha can have this beaten bronze appearance. It can also have bullseye maculopathy. Um, RPE is thickened with lipofusion. What does the FA show? This is a very common question. Chloride. Yes. Um, and the macula with uh, sometimes a, can, you can see a window defect. So you can see here the piscoform flex on the top photo and then the dark choroid on the bottom. But Dr. Cohen, what's the other name? All right. So here's uh, best disease. Um, here are the stages. Now, um, these patients oftentimes have vision better than what you'd expect for these very dramatic photos. So we have pre, pre vitelliform you can follow around, follow along on the right side, it has a submacular yellow spot. Vitelliform shows a fried egg appearance. Um, and these are three to 15 year olds or young, these are children basically. Scrambled eggs uh, is the next one with irregular subretinal spots. Cyst pseudohypopion, sorry, a couple of typos on that screen, and a round chloriretinal atrophy. Um, in the end, that's the atrophic scar at the very bottom. All right, the ERG and the EOG. Can somebody tell me if the ERG is normal abnormal and the EOG is normal abnormal? ERG is normal, EOG abnormal. Yep, frequent question. It's a good prognosis. All right, so here's just the case kind of thrown in the middle of the rest, but um, we can have, we'll have some quiz, quiz uh, questions on the end of this case. So just, uh, this is a 29 year old male with flashes and floaters. You can see this fundus photos, these fundus photos 
Um, does anybody just want to describe the photos? You don't have to answer all the questions, but. Oh, let me get, let me advance and then you can describe the next photo. All right, some, can somebody just tell me what we see here? One of our first years maybe is just a, just to describe the photo, that's all. Yeah, I'll go. Um, so we have a uh, color fundus photos, it looks like of both eyes. Yeah. Um, and the vitreous generally appears clear, more mm -hmm. more clear in the right eye and the left eye, but um, probably yes. clear both. Um, the nerves look pink, sharp, and flat to me. Um, there is what looks like maybe some um, peripapillary atrophy, kind of 360 degrees around the nerves. Okay. Um, with what maybe exudates surrounding that atrophy, kind of yellow, whitish, um, exudative looking material. Okay. Um, and then the vessels appear grossly normal. Um, macro splat, periphery looks attached. And um, then there's a small spot that we're drawing attention to with the uh, arrow there. There are two arrows. So we have a white white arrow on the right eye and a and a green arrow on the left. Yeah, I missed um, that green arrow. What do you see in the zoomed in photo of the left eye? It looks like uh, hemorrhage to me. Yes. Like, uh, what do you think about the vessels? Um, inferior to the hemorrhage. The vessels inferior to the hemorrhage. Um, Just in, can you see uh, it like maybe, maybe some ghost vessels down there? Yeah, there's something, there, those are abnormal vessels, I, I agree. So, um, so this is a, this FA, what do we see on this FA in the periphery? We see that there's some blocking there where the where the um, hemorrhage was, and there is non-perfusion in both eyes, in the periphery, um, which is most easy, most easily seen temporally. But I believe it is 360. So what if um, what if this picture looked like this? What would what what would this FA pattern be called? You don't have it doesn't have to be the same person answering. Oh. Would that be the uh, C fan? Yes, that's the C fan. What's if we had the C fan? What would our what's our most likely diagnosis here with a C fan in a young patient with non perfusion? Sickle cell. Yes. If you have sickle cell, who gets the mo more severe retinopathy? What type of sickle cell? There are two. SC. Yeah. SC and sickle cell. Yes. Who gets the most severe systemic? Uh, findings. The SS. Yes. So here I'm pulling up a couple of more pictures. So if we have this, what's this? This is called a salmon patch. What it, What is a salmon patch? What does it mean? Isn't it like old heme? It is, it is hemorrhage. It's pre-retinal and intraretinal hemorrhage caused by ruptured arterial due to ischemia. What's the other, um, what's the other peripheral um, name for a finding that we can also have that's, that's yeah. darker? Black sunspots. It's a sunburst. Yes, exactly. And that's intraretinal heme um, causing RPE disruption and hyperplasia. What if a patient that looked somewhat similar to this were didn't have sickle cell and they were born at 28 weeks? What are we guessing that they might have? ROP. ROP. What if they had a family history of something like this and they were full term and they didn't have sickle cell? What'd you say? Fever. Fever. Yeah. What if they had world skin patches and abnormal teeth? We just kind of. I, I touched on this earlier. Continent shit. Yeah, exactly. What if they had bilateral retinal detachments and hearing abnormalities? I haven't told you about this one, and I don't think we, we have time to go into it either. Is this Nori? Nori. Yes. Okay, great. So um, let's talk about 
peripheral envy. There's a mnemonic that might help you guys with your OCAPs. Fires thrive for peripheral envy. You don't have to give me the mnemonic but unless you know it, but give me a couple of peripheral envy. Um, you know, we've heard of some of them already. Reasons for peripheral envy. Does anybody know the mnemonic? All right, I'll go through a couple, unless, unless anybody has just one or two peripheral envy. I mean, I know you guys know some of them. Well, F, I, and R, I'm guessing, are the ones we've already talked about. All right. So, fever, incontinenta pigmenti, ROP, eels, sickle cell, talc retinopathy, hyperviscosity syndromes, retinoschisis, Irvan, and vasculitis and uveitis. So it's a good mnemonic. Some of them are, the ones on the left you know about, the ones on the right are more, um, less common to see uh, peripheral envy. Okay, what is um, another name, if we're talking now about juvenile retinoschisis, what is another name for this? Okay, it's also called X-linked retinoschisis. You guys probably knew that. What is the inheritance? I already told you, X-linked recessive. I wrote XLR, it's called X-linked retinoschisis, that the, the abbreviation would be XLR and the inheritance is XLR. So it's easier to remember. Um, is this a male or a female disorder? Male. Yes, unilateral or bilateral? I think it's bilateral. Yes. Age of presentation. Young. Yes. It's it's see, seen in birth and it progresses rapidly during early childhood. It oftentimes can stabilize during early adulthood and some of these cysts can even collapse. So um, as opposed to, there's a difference between juvenile and, a, and adult or senile retinoschisis where, in terms of the layer of the splitting of the retina in the beginning. So where do you see it in juvenile X-linked retinoschisis? In SL. Yes. And then what about in adults? Outer plexus. Yep. What is the pathognomonic finding of juvenile X-linked retinoschisis? Like Everybody's got to have this. Phalangectasia? It's foveal retinoschisis. So you don't have to have peripheral retinoschisis to have juvenile X-linked retinoschisis versus mm. the adult or senile type. I was just going to chime in quickly. One of the things that always bothered me about this is the nerve fiber layer schesis is in the periphery. Yes. When you look at the foveal schesis, it's actually, so that picture on the bottom is what everybody thinks it's, about. With right, that these, are ca these are more cavities yeah. um, that can, and, but they can happen later because you can have the, the, in the very early stages that spoke like ILM folds, that that's oftentimes what you see. And then you see cysts, but yes, good. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Um, is this the, is there a bike tire image reference? There, um, I don't have, I don't have a photo of it. I actually looked for a photo of it, but, but it, that's, that's probably what, I mean, that seems like what we're talking about with the spoke like ILM folds. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there is vascular sheathing in some of these patients, vitreous cells, um, they can have, they can, one that those blood vessels are unsupported. You can get a vitreous hemorrhage. Um, RDs are not, uh, are, are not uncommon, but not in every case. There's no leakage. The ERG is normal, um, has a normal A wave until late, reduced B wave, reduce, reduced oscillatory potentials, um, oscillatory potentials, excuse me, and um, the EOG is normal. So if we're talking about no, no non-leaking CME right now, um, what we have a mnemonic, the young and the restless, use AT and T. I don't know if you guys, if that's a super common mnemonic, but I think probably it is. So tell me what the what other reasons for having non-leaking CME or cystoid spaces in the fovea macula area. The mnemonic I heard was the jung. And mm -hmm. the restless. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
I remember the G is like golden fabre. Yeah. The J is um, ju you know, yeah. we just talked about juvenile actually right. put up skis. Um, the U is ushers, is that right? Yep. yep. And N is niacin. It, it can go into yep. both categories. Yep. Okay. Uh, AT and T are like um, anti neoplastic drugs, I think. Yes. Yeah. And oh. what's that? Okay. Nope. Go ahead. I'm just going to come up with it here. And there was a um, there was more to it, but it was such a bad mnemonic that it won't stick. <laughs> well, the, the, those are the only. There are pro, there are more, but the, that's the mnemonic that we that we were talking about. But yes, Zipper. you got them all. So um, if we go back and, and to, you know, one of these mnemonics, Goldman Favre, um, this is also called enhanced S cone syndrome. So what works? Basically the rods don't work. Some of the cones don't work. What, what works? It's only the blue cones. Yeah. Inheritance. Recessive. Is it unilateral or bilateral? Bilateral. Yes. Nyctalopia, constricted visual fields. Um, you can see some of the findings that are um, kind of look like um, a combination between F, uh, retinoschisis and RP. Um, the ERG is reduced and the EOG is normal. That's what, uh, that is, an, uh, if you're going to get a test question, it's oftentimes that. So you can see a picture here that could look like RP uh, similar. Um, so if we're going to talk, let's talk about RP now. There are, pri there are primary RP uh, diseases and secondary RP diseases. Um, secondary meaning that they are associated with other organ system um, diseases. So type one RP is rod cone, type two is cone rod. The inheritance is um, most commonly um, either autosomal recessive or s could be some more uh, sporadic. The X-linked retinas, uh, X-linked uh, RP is, has the, is the most uncommon and has the worst prognosis. The autosomal dominant is the least bad of the options. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows a lot of these ocular associations, keratoconus, um, CME, Coates disease, optic nerve drusen, astrocytic hamartoma, myopia. So we can see a picture here which shows us some of the findings. It doesn't show us the cataract, the vitreous cell that you can get, and it doesn't have any exudation to, to indicate a Coates-like response, which is possible in RP. But you can see that the nerve might be more pallorous than another person of a similar, of a, uh, of a, of a normal age for these patients. Um, you can get a glial membrane over the disc, which causes that waxy pallor. Uh, retinal atrophy um, lets us be able to see the choroidal vessels here. You can see the bone spicules in the periphery. An ERM, which you, you can't see here, but just to know, you can get ERM, CME, and then you do have very obvious attenuated arteries in these patients, vessels in general, I think. So um, this is one of the differential diagnoses of a salt and pepper fundus. What are some other, there are a lot of salt and pepper fundus um, that will, you'll be tested on. So give me some, uh, give me some more. Measles. Part, I didn't hear that, sorry. Measles, is that one of them? Um, rubella. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure about measles. I don't remember that as being one of them, but um, rubella is certainly on the list, and, and I think you're thinking of the MMR type of disorders. But go ahead. Uh, any, anybody else? There's Usher syndrome. And... What was All that, right. Chris? Ones that are basically just RP with other findings. Yes. Um, RP, um, rubella, um, Lieber's um, carrier states of some of the disorders that we've talked about. Syphilis is probably far and away the number one most tested. So definitely remember that. Um, cystinosis, phenothiazine toxicity, pattern dystrophies, and resolved exudative detachments. Um, those were the ones that I could remember or come up with. 
there, I'm sure there are more, there are a ton of these. Um, so this is an, the, this is an important question because um, if you actually see patients with RP um, who, especially who don't have a, um, well, if they don't have a family history um, and they haven't had a workup, um, we, we should always rule out treatable causes of RP, and there are several. So the first one we'll talk about is A-beta lipoproteinemia. What's the inheritance of this, and what is the other name for it? I don't know. That's okay. recessive. Yes, it's recessive. What is the, what's it also known as? Bazin Conswig, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's, but know the name. Um, deficiency in the what vitamins? A, D, E, and K. Yes, the fat soluble vitamins. What's the treatment? You're just treating the deficiency, but mostly A and E um, in terms of the eye. I imagine that they get other supplements as well. What about refs? By the way. Pardon? I think that's corn swag, by the way. That's corn, corn, corn swag. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe I missed the letter. Re, um, Refsum's disease? That's that syndromic RP where they, um, I think they, I don't know, I feel like they mess their ears up or something. Yeah, like it's, like, it's a nerve. It's like phytanic acid, so it destroys all your acid that's true. I, I forgot though that I had to, I added something else for A-beta lipoproteinemia. If they're missing A, D, E, and K in A-beta lipoproteinemia, what's the corneal finding you might, you might have? The toe like spots. Toe spots yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I listed at the bottom, other treatable RP due to vitamin A deficiency is chronic panc pancreatitis, cirrhosis, and bowel resection. All right, Refsum's disease, uh, autosomal recessive, elevated, we just talked about was a problem with phytanic acid oxidase, so elevated phytanic acid. The treatment is dietary restriction, um, including animal fats, milk products, and green leafy vegetables. All right, so um, gyrate atrophy is the last RP spectrum disease that we'll talk about um, that's treatable. Um, What's the inheritance? I gave you a little um, hint in the capitalization of the name. It's autosomal recessive. What's the deficiency here? It's like ornithine transferase or something. Yes. What's high in the ornithine aminotransferase uh, deficiency? Ornithine. Actually, it's not. That, that would be great. Or I'm sorry, no, it is. What's low? Lysine. My mistake. I was thinking about the last one. Um, so ornithine is high, lysine is low. Um, peripheral findings is uh, peripheral to posterior retinal degeneration, scalloped areas of absent choriocapillaris, and RPE with abrupt, abrupt uh, transition, high myopia, cataracts, and vitreous degeneration. What is the treatment? Like lysine supplementation, right? This is what I was uh, getting confused about earlier. It's actually that you restrict arginine and protein. So you're restricting, you're not restricting ornithine and you consider B6 supplementation because I, I believe it's a catalyst um, in, the, in the immunotransferase, but I can't recall the exact reason for that one. Um, choroideremia. So this is X-linked recessive. It's in the CHM gene. Um, the, it's a rod cone degeneration. The vision is good for a few decades, for four to five decades. So it's not really PEDS, but it is you know, an in inherited disorder. You can see the photo with the absence of RPE and choriocapillaris except in the macula. Ashley, before we go on, when I first started practice, I used to get blood tests on some of my RP patients. I haven't done that in a long time. Does anybody test for vitamin A deficiency or any of those things? I think with new diagnoses, um, they, were, they are uh, tested, at least where I trained, with new diagnoses. And sometimes they would go into a, um, 
I think a, a lot of our P, I would send them to our, one of our um, inherited retinal disorder um, kind of physicians and they would uh, put them in a, a database and, and call them when they get um, new studies that they might be eligible for. So it's an, at least nice to have that on the books. And they, I think they get, they get gene tested. Does anybody, does anybody do that and send anything? So I get genetic testing on 100% of the um, dystrophy patients now because we have the cost-free tests from two sources. There's the commercial one from Spark Therapeutics and the Foundation Fighting Blindness Funded Test. So they all get cost-free saliva genetic testing. But I haven't gotten a vitamin A on them in a long time. You know, maybe I'm overlooking that. But a lot of them come back with um, genetic abnormalities. I think if they come back with a bad gene, I think we can skip the vitamin A testing. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Although it seems like an easy thing to get, um, depending on, you know, so, sometimes the, at least I, I, I recall in Miami that it was difficult sometimes in non-citizens or um, patients without any documentation to always get all the testing. So um, that's maybe something that our residents have more problem with than we do in our practice. Um, all right. So I didn't, uh, I didn't do a, an animation here, but we always remember the di differential diagnosis of bullseye maculopathy. We just went through some of the, some of them, um, including star guards, um, but remember Plaquenil, star guards, AMD, chronic macular hole, and some of the RP variants can have a bullseye maculopathy. And then a cherry red spot. I'm gonna go back and let's see, I, I get, you had a sneak preview, but what, give me a di differential diagnosis of um, bullseye, or I'm sorry, of cherry red spot. Tay-Sachs. Yep. BRAO. Yep. BR or any RAO usually. Even pick. Yes. There are some more. There's a big list. All right. So Tay-Sachs, Sandoff's, uh, Neiman Pick, and Gaucher's are the sphingolipidoses. They're the lysosomal enzyme defects. Um, so sphingolipids accumulate in retinal ganglion cells. And there's, I'm at, there's one left off of this chart, um, metachromatic leukodystrophy or something, I, I, I think. I, I, can't re I can't remember the last one, but um, we had talked about RAO. Um, macular hole might look like this. Uh, Berlin's edema, certainly. If you, so Komosho, but um, in the macula, so Berlin's edema edema, macular hemorrhage, some of the toxicities like quinine and methanol, ocular ischemic syndrome, I've never seen that look like this, but um, maybe that's on the spectrum of RAO, and subacute sclerosing panencephalitis is on, is in the books. Uh, I've also never seen that. We just have a couple more, more um, slides, um, and then and so we'll ju let's just start off also with um, Stickler syndrome and just to close this out. Where, what is the inheritance of Sticklers? Autosomal recessive? No. Yeah, uh, dominant. Arthroophthalmopathy. So um, remember that these patients are marfanoid in some ways and they have a high myopia. They have a, a very high rate of detachment, 50%. They have radial perivascular pigment changes and an optically empty vitreous lattice optic atrophy can have cataract and glaucoma. What is the facial finding? Um, what's the name for the constellation of facial findings? It's a Pierre Robin anomaly. It has, you can see these patients over, up here in the right. They have this mid-facial flattening. They can have cleft palate, palate um, micronathia or retronathia, and glossotosis. And this will just quick note, if I may. Part. What did you say, Dr. Pollock? Would you Would you go back just one slide? 
Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just to note, the perivascular pigmentary changes that you see there is lattice degeneration. It's very posterior. Right. Okay. Thank you. How about Wagner's disease? That's on our list too. Um, but I didn't, I didn't go into that one. I didn't go into many of the, um, of the, of those. There, there's a whole list um, in the, in the book. There are just so many of them that um, I'm trying to find them on your paper. If you guys have the, did you guys use this book, the Trotler book, Trotler Friedman book? Is that still used? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the, the red one, right? Third edition review. Uh, the review. It's not, mine wasn't read, but it's uh, maybe eight years old. So um, Wagner, Jansen's are on there um, and you can read about them. Um, so is uh, Wild Marchishani and Snowflake Degeneration. Those are the vitreoretinal de degenerations that are listed. Um, Wagner's is similar um, in, in some ways to Stickler's, especially with the lattice, the vascular, um, sheathing optic atrophy. So the the last and the, and Wagner's is also autosomal dominant. Jansen's is too. So all all of these degenerations um, are autosomal dominant. All the vitreoretinal retinal degenerations. If you go to um, uh, so on a, on a different um, in a different area of on that book, they talk about albinism. I think they have a good review of albinism. Um, most of these patients have foveal hypoplasia and nystagmus. The inheritance is recessive more than dominant. What is the gene defect? Kind of on there, it's tyrosinase. So these, the patients that are, it's subcategorized into negative and positive. So the patients who are tyrosinase negative have no pigmentation, that's chromosome 11. The positive ones are, they gain pigment and that's chromosome 15. Sorry, I think it's 15, it's blocked by this. Yeah, okay, it's 15. That's Prater, Willie, and Angelman's. And you have to remember the lethal variants, this will be tested. There are two lethal variants for albinism. These are the, it's the last two questions. I think they were done after this. So think about it, what are they? Chediak Kagachi is one. Yeah. What is that one? Uh, that one, I know you get sick a lot, a lot of infections. Yeah, exactly. And what's the, what's the next one? Pudlock something. Yeah, Hermansky Pudlock. That's the one with um, most common in Puerto Rican patients um, and they have bleeding diatheses, platelet um, anomalies. So the Chediakagashi has infection, a reticular endothelial dysfunction leading to infections and high rates of leukemia and lymphoma. And the, Ch Ch uh, the Herm Hermansky Pudlak is on there too. So um, I think that's it for our OCAP review quiz today, um, but I could come up with more for a later time. There's just, I mean, like I said, I, th I don't think we reached uh, even a quarter of, of all that needs to be um, reviewed for it, it's a very highly tested um, and very heavily concentrated um, part of of OCAPS and boards reviews. So don't forget to try to learn some of them this year because it gets you know it's just easier every year you review, even if you guys don't have OCAPS this year. Does any uh, should we start the cases? Yeah, that, that was great. Yeah, thanks a lot. That was excellent. Thanks. There was one, one of your slides that you showed earlier that I thought was rather interesting, Ashley. It, it was the introduction to peripheral neovascularization or, or pathologies of peripheral mm -hmm. uh, that involve neovascularization. And I thought it was an interesting slide, because, and I, I didn't say anything because I thought it was going to come up later, but uh, you showed, it showed peripapillary changes. It was a patient yeah. who I think had sickle, and I yeah. think it's worth mentioning that they get uh, enjoyed streaks, and so yeah. that that this, finding sort of unified the diagnosis. Yes, that was that was um, that was on another slide that I just left out because I I wanted to um, I, I was a, I was not going to go into all the the I have another presentation that includes all the disc abnormalities, so I just kind of left that one out. But yes, it, 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 the patient did have angioid streaks. 